Hi viewer, this is the Elim channel. I'm Vincent Kamai, and I'll be your teacher for today. I'll be taking you through common proportions and rates of work that's from 3 Mathematics chapter 14. I welcome you all. Stay tuned. We shall start with the compound proportions, and this is 14.1. Under compound proportion, we shall start with the in proportion. In proportional. When you are being told that some of the items are in proportionals, they do mean that if you take those terms and you do as I will show you, then they should give a resultant result as we shall see. For example, if you have numbers like 3, 6, which are a maybe arithmetic sequence, 17, let's say 6, 17, 34, these are numbers, but we don't know the order to which it was designed or given during specific of designing. So if we have those four numbers, let's say it's number 3, 6, 17, and 34, these numbers may be in proportional on if and only if, if you take number 3, you divide by 6, you should get 17 over 34. And this one will give you, here you're going to get 1 over 2, and here you're going to get 1 over 2. So many, it's truly giving us the right answer. And the same should apply that if you take 3 over 17, it should give you 6 over 34 such that if you do that you are going to get this one is going to give you 3 over 17 here if you divide by 2 you are going to get 3 over 17 when you find such numbers behave in such a sequence or a manner we do say those numbers are in proportional so in general we will say that in general we will say if a you have number a b and you have C and D, we can only say these numbers are in proportional only if, if you take A over B is equal to C over D, and this one will give you a given constant. And if you take A over C, it should give you B over D, which is another given kind of constant, let's call it M. It will give you another kind of constant. So as for our case, we found that if we take this one, if we refer to as A, this one B, this C, and this D, we shall find that this is A, this B, this C, and this D. Here we have A, this one is B, this C, this is D. So we have found, and this one is what I'm referring to M, this one is what I'm referring to K. So we can see what is happening there. So we have found, if you take any number, uh, for example, if you have four numbers and you have A, B, C, and D, if you take A over B, as we have seen, it should give you a constant of which is similar to C over D. And the same applies to the other. Let's see an example. Uh, we have an example. Find the fourth number if the following uh, numbers is in proportional. So we have here assigned a number. We have some number here. We need to find the next number if these ones are in proportional. So we shall do this. We have P squared. We have another number as PQ. We have another one as PR. So we needed to find out the fourth number which we don't know. And we know one thing, that from the formula of in proportionals, we have said if you take A over B, it should give you C over D and this one is equal to K. Or if you take A over C, it should give you B over D, and this one is another constant, like say M. So that is what rules will guide us to find numbers if they are in 
proportional. With that, we can start here and say, let us assign this one here B our A, this one B our B, and this is C, such that we now need to seek B. So we shall say, our missing number here, let it be letter D, such that if we take A over B here, meaning that if we take P over P, that is P squared over PQ, we should get PR, which is C over D, PR over D, let's say that is D, and this is what we are finding. So we need to find that D. I will write with another pen to identify what we need to find so as not to confuse. So we need to find that D, and then if we also take A over C, meaning that A over C, that is P squared over PR, we should get B over D, which is PQ over D, which we don't have. That is what we are seeking. So, and this one will give us a given constant, let's say this one, let's give us M, as we used it earlier, and that one has K. So if that one is the case, we can do out and find that if that one is the case, you're going to get this one. Uh, we can do what we call cross multiplication and find out that you will have P multiplied by B. So that is B P squared. And here we have is equal to PQ PR. So that is P squared P squared QR. So we are going to find P squared QR if we do that. So that is what we are having. So if you find out you are going to get this one is going to give you this one is going to give you uh, divide both sides by p squared, both sides by p squared, you will find that d is equal to p squared will cancel and you will have qr. You are going to have qr. And in such that if you take p squared over pq, you will get pr over d. So you can solve this one in several ways. You can even use this formula whereby you will now say p squared will still give you the same as what we have done here and you will get that. And another method of solving that one, another method, you may solve the same here by first taking, since we say this one is equivalent and it's equivalent to that, we can say that if we calculate out here we shall find p squared over pq is equal to k, such that P here will divide once and here you will have P so that we find K is equivalent to P over Q. So that is our K. But we know even here, if we take this one here, such that if we take PR, PR over, actually is in black, so that is if we take PR over B, we should get k which is p over q so meaning that if we need that it means whatever we just missing here we shall cross multiply here and you are going to find that uh, dp is equal to p r q and if you divide by p divide by p you will find d is equal to P and P and you will find it is Q R. The same to what we just find using the other formula. So here, our D here is equal to Q R. And I think you have seen how we can find that formula. The same, you can use the same method. I will give you one of the examples you have to solve yourself. That is 2564 Find the missing number to make it in proportional uh, if we have 25, 64, and 81, find the missing number that will make that system of number, the four system numbers, to be proportional. 
Let's now move on to another section, which is we have continued proportional. Continued proportions, actually, should be continued proportions. So, if it is continued proportions, then we shall consider generality, and if we consider generality, we shall say that if you are having numbers A, B, C, D, or let's say and D as our numbers, then it is given that if you want to know these numbers are in continued proportional, then if you take A over B, you will get B over C, and this will be equal to C over D, and this will give you K. In such, if you have to do this, you will find this one is resembling what we did uh, in what you will be doing in sequence and series, and you will find that this one will be giving you a geometrical series, geometrical uh, ratio, geometrical series ratio, series or it may be a geometrical sequence ratio, that is called a GP or a sequence ratio, so it will be a geometrical sequence ratio. Such so that if you do that, you will find k, and that is the numbers which are uh, following each other. So you will find the value is k. With that, we can say that we have such number like we are having 2, 4, 8, and 16. So if we are having 2, 4, 8, and 16, then we can use it as a good example here. 2, 4, 8 and 16. We can use it as a good example here and say that if we need to know if these numbers are in proportional, then we shall see that if we take 2 over 4, it should give us 4 over 8 and this should be equal to 8 over 16. So if we do that and you find it's true, then those numbers are in proportional. For this instance, this one is going to give us a half in each case. And we can say the numbers are in proportional. Now, we are going to, to view in case where you have been issued with three of the numbers which are in continued proportions. For example, you have A, B, and C. If you have these three numbers, and they are in continued proportion, then it means that if you take A over B, it is equal to B over C, and this one will give you K. And for this case here, if you want to find the value of B, for example, you will find out that it will be equal to B, will be equal to B squared, actually, because you multiply it, it will give you B squared is equal to a, C. And if you work out the value of B you are going to find, you will have to find the square root on both sides uh, such that you get B is equal to square root of either positive or minus A, C. Now from this one, we know if three numbers are in continued proportions, then it means here that B is in intermediate of the two of the three numbers. So this B here is what we refer to as the mean continued proportion. So it will be mean pro mean continued mean proportion. Actually, it's mean proportion, but it's the mean continued proportion uh, to A and C. So it will be mean continued proportion to A and C because it is being found in between A and C. So it will be the mean continued proportion between A and C. And then here C is referred to as the third, third proportion to, it is third proportion to A and B. So we shall find out that uh, we have an example here, for example, we are want to work out 
Find the mean proportion to 3 and 6. Find the mean proportion to 3 and 6. So we will have been, that's the reason why it is good to understand the meaning of mean proportion to A and C and also the third proportion to A and B. Remember, this one we are dealing with the continued proportions which are in three numbers, not four. So if they are in three numbers, then if you take L over B, we have said it will be equal to B over C. And if you need the value of B here, it will be B squared by cross multiplication. And you find B squared is equal to A multiplied by C. And the value of B alone will be, you find the square root on both sides and you find it is AC. So, whatever you have the three numbers, B is the mean proportion of A and C, and C is the third proportion to A and B. And now we have been asked to find the mean proportion to 3 and 6. So, if that is the case, what we are going to do here, we are going to introduce that one. We know if we needed to find the mean proportion to 3 and 6, then it means there is a missing number in between which we refer to as B. That is what we refer to mean proportion. So that means that if we take 3 over B is equal to B over 6, such that B squared, if you cross multiply, is going to give you, actually it will give you 3 multiplied by 6, that is 18, so you will have 18. So meaning that B squared, you will go on finding the square root on both sides and you will find B is equal to square root of 18. This 18 can be simplified further to give out 9 multiplied by 3. 9 multiplied by 2 I mean, such that we are going to have 9 multiplied by 2. And if we do that, we are going to get, we are going to get B equals to either positive if we do this we will find the square root of 9 is 3 then we multiply by square root of 2 so it will be square root of 2 this one I mean we can simply make this one to be square root of 9 and multiply by square root of 2 where it is either positive or minus so if we get that it will be that way and B can be either positive or B can be equal to negative 3 root 2. So that is are the possible values or the angles which we can get for B uh, as the mean proportion to A to 3 and 6. So as we can come, uh, we can now view this one, you will find out that this A for our A here 3 is positive, 6 is also positive. So meaning that our B lies in between them must be positive. So we shall now ignore the negative answer and take the positive answer. So meaning that our B here is positive 3 root 2. And that is how you can find the mean proportion of a given number to that 3 and 6. So we shall go on and see another one. In case you have been given A, B, C, and D, what happens? Now, under these continuous proportions, let's now view in case we have A, B, C, and D. Remember we have said, if this A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D are in proportion, in continued proportion, we have said, if you take A over B, B over C is equal to C over D, which is equal to D over, actually it's not present, so this one will be equal to K. And together we can see from this one, we can work out by taking just A over B is equal to, A over B equals to B over C and C equals to A over D. So we can say also that A over B is equal to C over D. So A over B is equal to C over D. A over B is equal to C over D if you have any of them. So meaning that here we have found that if you take A over B, you will find is equal to K 
and if you get these ones, you are going to get their all case. And if a over b is equal to k, we said also c over d is equal to k. So mean that a over b is equal to c over d. And this one is k. That is what we are referring to numbers in continuum proportion. So uh, if that one is the case, then you know one thing that um, from here, if you have this a, b, c, d, and d, these two numbers here, they are referred to as mean proportions, mean, continuum mean proportions of a and, actually let me just write here for, so a, a and b actually is b and c, are a proportion, mean proportion, are mean proportion proportion to A and D. That one are mean proportion to A and D. Now we are going to check another one which is A and D. This one I refer to as extreme proportions of uh, B and C. Extreme. There are extreme proportions of A and actually B and C. So if you have those numbers, if you may be asked to find uh, the mean proportional of A and D, in case you have four numbers, then you know you are finding B at the same time you are finding C. And if you are being asked to find the mean the extreme proportionals of B and C, that one where well, they are referring to A and C. And here, if you are being asked to find, they will give you a condition which is related A to B or to D, such that if you find that one as A over B or B over C or C over D, you will get K. And that's what we are referring to as mean proportion in it. For example, we want to do a question which handles that problem. And the question reads, given that x, y, x to y, that is x ratio of y, is equal to 2 to 3, 2 to 3, that is 2 to 3. Find the ratio of 5x minus 4y to x plus y. That is 5x. Find the ratio of 5x minus 4y to x plus y. Here what we shall do, we shall find out these are four numbers where this one are letters and these are numbers and they are in continuous proportion. So we shall do this. We are going to take, if you take x over 2, uh, it will be equal to y over 3. If you take it that, you are going to take this way, and then this one is taking the other way around. So if we do that, you will find that x over 2 is equal to y over 3. So in that case, this one will give us what we refer to as k. And if that is the case, you will find out that if I do that direction, I will find that if I take out that one, I'm going to have x over 2 is equal to k, such that x alone is equivalent to 2k. And if I need y, then I will have y over 3 is equal to k. y alone will be equal to 3k, because I will be multiplying by that. And here also I multiply by that because it's over 1. So I will find this k3, 2k, and 3k. So I will substitute the values which I found in the equation which I have been given and I will substitute out that 5 but x, x here is 2k. So 5 into 2k, then minus this one all is in bracket. 4y and y is 3k so I'll substitute y with 3k and I will find uh, out what it will give so this ratio is 2 x, x is 
2k. So x is 2k plus y. y is 3k. We substitute y as 3k and we shall find that one. So if we do that, we are going to get here is 10k minus here you are going to get 12k to the ratio of 2k plus 3k you are going to get that is actually 5k 2 plus 3 you will get 5 so this one is going to give us 5k but here 10k minus 12k you are going to get negative 2k so we have negative 2k to 5k if we need to do the ratio, then we have to divide with this k to remove k from both sides. So we shall have negative 2 to 5. So we can see that this ratio here, if x to y is equal to 2 to 3, then it means that negative this 5x minus 4y to x plus y, it is negative 2 to Five. And that is how we can find. Uh, we can also use another example. Actually, it's an example on... We need to do an example on in proportion. And we have if A over B... If A over B is equal to C over D, then find... A minus 3B, show that A minus 3B over B minus 3A is equal to C minus 3D over D minus 3C. If you do that, we need to show that this one here is equal to that if this one is given like that. We know one thing that from this equation here, if it is in proportion, then it means that if we take that one, we are going to get k. At the same time, if you take a over c is equal to b over d, and this one also will give you another constant, which we may take as m. Let's just call it m, constant m. So if that is the case, we are going to work out what we have here and say that if that is the case then a over c is equal to m meaning that we can find a as c m and also b over d is equal to m meaning that the value of b can be found by taking d multiplied by m so you will find that way the same applies to upper but because they are what using that so we need to work out using the other Measure, measure. So, with that, we are going to work out and see what it will give us. For example, we are going to take if A is here, we shall replace A with what we have that is CM. So, A we are going to replace with the CM where M is the constant and A here has been replaced with the CM. So, we are going to replace that way, then minus. So, we are going to give minus. 3b, but b is dm, so 3 multiplied by dm, we are going to get 3dm, so that is what we are going to have, and then here we are going to take here b, and b is dm, so it is over dm, then minus 3a, so it is minus 3cm, minus 3c. M. That is what we have as the value of A. So after doing that, we can factor out the common in both numerator and denominator, and we shall find that if you factor out the common in the numerator, you are going to get M into C minus 3D uh, over the denominator will have M into D minus 3C. If you do that, you can cancel the the m because it is both in the numerator and denominator and after cancelling you are going to remain with the c minus 3d is equal to d minus 3c with that we have shown that a minus 3b over b minus 3a is similar to this c minus 3d d minus 3c we have shown and you have seen how it comes about 
With that, we have come to an end of continued proportion and in proportion for compound proportions. So you can use the method of either in proportion of where you have three or four numbers and work out any given sum concerning them, uh, concerning compound proportion. And also if you have been given three of the numbers and given conditions, you can use that one which we do we did using continued proportions and work out any of the given problem so long as you understand the conditions. Under proportional parts, you are going to consider a school which is having 1,200 students and having a ratio of boys to girls as 2 to 3. The population of the school then can be calculated out and we shall find out that if you want to find the population of the school, uh, we know the population of that school is 1,200 uh, students. If we need to know that how many students from this population is equal to uh, boys, then we have been given a ratio of boys to girls as ratio of boys to girls we have been given 2 to 3. So we needed to find the number of boys which are in the school and also the number of girls which are in the school. What we shall do here, this one I refer to as proportional parts, as where we have a part of the population representing boys and a part of the population representing the number of girls. So if we want to find the total number of girls or boys who are in the school, we need to get the whole number, which is the total parts, and total parts shall be taken by taking the total ratio. This is equal to total parts, which will be now 2 plus 3, and you will get this one is going to give you 5. And in case you want to find the number of boys, then you will have to take two parts of the total parts. Here we have a total parts of 5, but two of these total parts is representing boys. So we shall, not, we shall divide two of the total parts is boys. So we shall multiply uh, with the total population of students in that school, whereby this 5 at the denominator represents 1,200. It's the total population of all the students in the school. 2 represent only the number of boys, and 3 here represent only the number of girls. So meaning if we need number of boys here, we shall find them by taking 2 over 5 multiplied by 1,200 and this one here is going to give you 480 boys. And the other one here for the girls will be equal to 3 over 5 multiplied by 1,200 and you will get this one is equal to 720 boys. Sorry, 720 girls. So you are finding that one is equal to 720 girls. If you take the number of boys, you add to the number of girls, you will still get 1,200. Thereby, thereby I will say, we have found the number of boys and the number of girls using a technique of proportional parts, whereby it was div divided into different kinds of parts. So we used that first, uh, to calculate various uh, number of each item, for example, this was the first item and this one another one. So we use the parts of representing each item to calculate the number of the total items uh, in a whole of which we had 1,200. But remember one thing, it was given in a ratio form. So if you want to find the total parts, you add up the ratio. With that, we can say that in case you have been provided with A, B, and C as parts being in the ratio of A to B to C, then know that if you want to find the part which represents A, 
then it will be a over now you will have to find the total ratio which will be a plus b plus c now if you get a over the total ratio then whatever you will be finding is the part or the proportional part which will be representing a for b it will be b over the total ratio which is a plus b plus c and this one will be the total proportional part which represent b for the c one will be c over a plus b plus c and that is what we shall have as the total part which is representing c that is in general case so we have seen in case you have been given any kind of uh, question which involve proportional parts you sum up first the given ratio then you use to find out whatever you want to find or according to condition which you have been given let's see an example a triangular range has a perimeter of 157.5 km find the length of each side if the sides are in the ratio of 3 to 5 to 7 so what we shall do here we have been given the perimeter of the triangle and that perimeter we are given as 157.5 kilometers that is the perimeter and we know perimeter is given as distance round all a given figure so if you find that one you will be finding the perimeter of a given figure so we have been told that the sides of that triangle are in the ratio of three to five um, to seven three to five to seven so we have been asked to find the length of each side what we shall do here we shall assign here each side let's say if we have this triangle here we may assign sides or not it depends with what you want for example we may say let this one be a this one is b, b and this one is c such that if we add up a plus b plus c we shall find 157.5 kilometers but now this one has been represented with the ratio form in that it is represented in the ratio of three this one five and this one for example seven so we need to find actually let's give it as a definite figure so that this one is three this is seven and this here is five so that we need to find what is the measure of each side this is not the measure of each side this is the ratio just showing how the sides are being summed up together to form a ratio so we shall find the length of each side and the length of each side we shall start with that which is represented by three then that of seven then that of five so what we shall do here we are going to find the total ratio and we shall find that the total ratio is equivalent to 3 plus 5 plus 7 and if you do that you are going to get this one is going to give you 15 so after getting 15 we shall now say if we need the length of this side which is represented by 3 then it shall be 3 over 15 multiplied by the total perimeter which is 157.5 and if you need that of 5 will be 5 over 15 multiplied by 157.5 kilometer and this one will give you something if it's that of 7 will be over the total ratio which is uh, which is 15 multiplied by 157.5 kilometers which is our perimeter so let's see what we shall find the first one is giving me a side of 31.5 kilometers the second one is giving me a side of 52.5 kilometers and the third one will give us 73.5 kilometers so if you sum up the, the three sides you will get 157.5 kilometers and that is how we can use proportional parts to find 
each of the hidden side or hidden solution to a given condition. So with that we have come to an end of proportional parts. It is upon you to find some problems which involve them and try the idea to find out the solution to those problems. Now let's move on to rates of work and mixtures. Here you will find some equations which deal with manual works whereby it may be a machine working against given land or given work for a given period of time under given specific conditions and you will be asked to find certain solution to whatever you will be hidden. Now, you may find that is one of them and another one may be in form of taps filling a tank whereby you will be required to find the LCM and then the others and another ones may be including Mi under mixtures, it's grades. You are mixing two quantities of different grades in order to obtain one grade which will make cost higher than the buying of the two so as to make maximize profit. So we shall handle all of this one under this rate of work and mixtures and we shall start with our first example uh, where we have been told this is for a manual work for example and we have told 20 men can lay 36 meter of pipe in eight hours how many long how long would 25 men take to lay the next 54 meters of pipe i'll repeat 20 men can lay at six meters of pipe in eight hours how long would 25 men take to lay the next 54 meters of pipe so what we shall we do here we are going to find the solution to this and firstly, we are going to identify whatever we have been told. So the first thing we have been told, 20 men can lay, actually they can lay 36 meters of pipe in 8 hours. We have been told in 8 hours. So we are going to identify how many men, how long would 25 men, so we have been given here 25 men, these are men, these meters and that is so. We have been given 25 men, who, how long can they lay 54 meters uh, of pipe, uh, so we are going to identify in what time will it be. And we have seen how it is, so we can say now, we are going to consider, uh, we have 20 men, 20 men laying 36 meters in of pipe in 8 hours. So what we shall do here, let's consider one man. How long will one man take to lay 36 meters of that pipe? So you will find he will lay in 8 multiplied by 20 hours. So that is how long he will take. Then, if that is the case, how long will that one man take to lay 36 meters of that pipe? Then it will be 8 multiplied by 20 divided by 36. This rates of work or equations or uh, problems in involving rates of work, we do it in step of step in order to get the accurate result. So with that you will find that one man will take 8 by 20 uh, over 36 hours to, to lay that 36 meters of, actually 36 meters of pipe uh, as we have seen. So. In case we have 25 men, let's say in case we have 25 men, how long will 25 men take to lay that the same? How long will 25 men take to lay that same 36 meters? So you will find it will take, uh, they will take that of 36, just that 36, you will, you will find. They will take uh, in one hour, in one, actually in one meter, they will take approximately of 8 multiplied by 20 over 36 multiplied by 25. So that is how long we, we saw that one man is taking this long, 
So 25 men will take what one man takes divided by 25. That is what we will find, 25 men will take. And in case we want 25 men to lay 54 meters, this is in one meter. What about 25 men laying, laying 54 meters of that pipe? How long will they take? So you will find, you will take that of one, of 25 men in one meter. Actually, this is 25 men takes uh, takes eight hours, eight times twenty over thirty-six times twenty-five hours uh, to lay one meter. And then, what about if it is fifty-four meters of that pipe? You will find that you are going to multiply by eight times twenty over 36 by 25 then you multiply by what you have there which is 50 for and divide if it is with one meter and we find that this one here will go on and give you uh, let's see what you find i'm getting 9.6 hours of which it is if you put into proper fraction you're getting 9 3 over 5 so this one is going to give us 9 3 over 5 hours so we may calculate it as 9, 3 over 5 hours. So we are finding that 25 men will take 9, 3 over 5 hours to lay 54 meters of pipe. So that's how we can calculate uh, that equation. You go step by step and you find out it is a little complicated just to predict the question how it will come but the solution may come in different form so you only need to have the skill of handling the question and the first one you handle it in step by step going by one man if it is one man or machine in given time and then one man to handle one of each particular in a given time then the way that way until where you will find the result so that is how it is simpler to handle that question. Another example will now be on LCM, testing LCM, but it's under rates and proportion. You will find out that you have been told three people, A, B, and C, can do a piece of work in four hours. In 45 hours, I mean, 40 hours, and 30 hours respectively. How long can B take to complete the work when he starts after A and C have worked for 13 hours each? So what we will do here, we are going to allocate those people. We have person A and this person A is working for 45 hours. Person B, if he works alone on that farm, we were being told that he will work for 40 hours. And person C, we shall find person C is working for 30 hours. Then we have been told, how long will B take to complete the same work? How long will B take to complete the same work if A and C had already worked for 13 hours. This is a question testing LCM and this question here it is also the same as those of tabs where you are being told a tab is to be filled with the, uh, different tabs and one may be open earlier or closed and then others are open. The same question uses the same technique as this one. So what you are required to do here since we were being told that A and C started working earlier, so we shall find what part or what part of work does they cover in one hour. You will find for A, only in one hour, A will cover one over 45 uh, uh, part of his work. So B will be one over 40, 
and C will be 1 over 30. That is the part of work we have found. In one hour each we have covered if he or she works alone. So we shall see what will A and B, where A and C have covered in 13 hours if they were working together. So what we are going to do, we shall take the part of work covered by A in one hour, and that is 1 over 45, we add to 1 over 30, so we shall find this one, we find the LCM, and we shall find the LCM is 90, so that is uh, 90, so 45 into 92, multiplied by 1, you will get 2 plus 30, yeah, 3, so you are going to get 3, so that one is giving us 5 over 90. And this one is the same as writing 5 over, they're going to give us 1 over 18. So, this is the work done. Is the work done in one hour by two of the people, A and C, combined. If we combine A and C working at the, the given rates there, you will find that in one hour, both of them will have covered a work of 1 over 18. So, meaning that in 13 hours, we shall take 1 over 18 as work covered in 1 hour, we multiply by 13 hours, and we shall find that the work which we have done in 13 hours is equal to 13 over 18. So this is the work done in 13. So let's just say covered. This is the work covered after 13 hours by A and B working together. So meaning that after A and B had worked for 13 hours, A and B went to rest and C, uh, A and C went to rest and B had to work alone. I mean, I'm sorry I confused. B had to work alone. So in case B had to work alone, it means that after A and C had worked for 13 hours, they went to rest and A and B, A and C now went to rest, so meaning that B had to come in and complete the remaining work and we shall see how long will that B take. For example, after covering this part of work, we needed to find what kind of work remained after 13 over 18 of that work was covered. So we shall take one, which is the total work done, we subtract 13 over 18 and we shall find this one is going to give us 5 over 18. So it means 5 over 18 was uncovered. This is the work which was uncovered. And this work here is the one which is needed to be covered by B. So we have seen that B covers 1 over 40 in 1 hour. So let's see what this work which is, is uncovered, how long will B take to cover it? So we shall take 5 over 18, divided by the work covered by B in one hour, and we shall get, this one is the same as taking 5 over 18, multiplied by 40 over 1. And you will get this one as 11, 11 and 1 over 9. You will find he will take 11 and 1 over 9 hours. That is the total time that B will take to cover the remaining work that had been uncovered by A and C. So with that we can say, given any kind of equation or question involving rates and works and mixtures and maybe in this condition. For example, I have told you mostly they include machine workings. Uh, one works and then fails, uh, another one comes and work again to finish the work or they work together and taps being open and now we have seen people working together. Those equations use the same procedure. So with that I believe that if you find any question there you can work it out and see what you will find out. So we want to go to another 
example which we shall solve dealing with mixtures and see how it works out. Now let's find an example here which will best solve mixtures and here we are going to see an example whereby you will be given two quantities of different grains being bought at different prices and then being mixed together to produce one mixture quantity which is much more specialized in that it will earn more benefit than selling or buying the two and then selling them differently. For example, we are going to tackle one of the examples here, right? In what proportion should grains of sugar costing 45 shillings and 50 shillings per kilogram uh, be mixed in order to produce a blend worth 48 shillings per kilogram? So here, we shall do two different ways in that we shall say, let we shall do this sum in two different ways. We shall do it firstly by saying, let uh, the number of kgs, let number of kgs of 45 shillings, uh, 45 shillings sugar being uh, mixed B, B, N, in such that if you take N B mixed uh, B B N being mixed by one kilogram of B N kg being mixed by one kilogram of fifty uh, fifty shillings uh, grade that is sugar. So we will find out that if that is the case, then. If we do that, we shall find that the total weight or the total mass of our mixture will then be, if we let N be the number of kgs of sugar A, which is 45 kg per kg, be mixed with that costing 50 shillings, uh, that is 1 kg, we shall find that our total mass will be N plus 1 kg. That is our total mass. So after getting our total mass as n plus 1 kg, then we shall now say the total price of the mixture will be equal to taking the total, uh, the amount per kg of n, multiplying by the total, the total kgs which we are mixed by 1 kg of 50 uh, shillings per kilogram, so that is one multiplied by 50, we shall get that, but this mixture, the other one is 45 multiplied by the n number of kg, so if we do this, and we divide by the total weight, which is n plus 1, whatever we should get here, we should get 48. If that is the case, then we are going to get this side we shall multiply by n plus 1 in order to eliminate the denominator on both sides, n plus 1, and we shall find out that we are going to end up with an equation which has 45n plus 50, that is 45n plus 50, is equal to 48 multiplied by n, you will get 48n, then 48 by 1, you will get a positive 48, and that will give us that way. So we can now find n and say that this n is equal to, uh, n will be equal to 45, let's bring that one with the other side, so it will be 45n minus 48n is equal to 48 minus 50. We collect the like terms, and if we collect the like terms, that is what we're going to live with. So that is 3n, and negative, actually it will give you negative 3n is equal to negative 2. So meaning n alone is equal to, n alone will give you over negative 3, over negative 3. So meaning n alone is equivalent to 2 over 3. That's the method, the first method. And we can see that if you want to find the ratio in which 45 kg is mixed, 45 shillings uh, grade A or grade B is mixed with another grade of costing uh, 50 shillings, we shall find that 
is mixed in the ratio of n to 1. And if it is n to 1, we have n equal to 2 over 3. Uh, meaning we can make this one by multiplying 3 on both sides to eliminate the denominator and have 2 to 3. So we have found that in case that is the case we are having, then the number of kilograms which are mixed is that in case you have, want to mix the two grades, you will take 2 kilograms of grade costing 45 shillings, you mix with 3 kilograms of grade costing 50 shillings. And if you mix the mixture, then 1 kilogram of that mixture will be costing 48 shillings. And that's how we do solve by the first method. Second one, second method is just simple. You say, let that sugar costing 45 shillings be bought at x. So x be the number of kilogram, x kg, be number of kilogram. So we can say, sugar costing 45 shillings uh, be of x kilogram and that of that of costing 50 shillings be y kilogram such that if we take 45 multiplied by x plus 50 multiplied by y we shall get the total cost which was spent in purchasing the total. But if we divide by the total number of kilograms which they were mixed, then we shall be finding a mixture. If we divide, we shall be finding a mixture, and that one will give us a mixture of, if we add the two, that is a total mass in mixture. So this one, the total cost spent in purchasing the two grains of sugar, and this one is the total mass of the two sugar. If we take the total cost divided by the total mass, mass, we should get 48. And here, if we do that, we are going to get out that you will still multiply x plus y, and here by x plus y. So you are going to get 45x plus 50y is equal to 48x plus 48y. So if we do that, you will collect like terms and find out that 45x, this one can go the other direction, so we shall have, we can have now 45x to the other direction will be 48, now it will be 50y, there is 50y minus 48y, 50y minus 48y, and is equal to 48x minus 45x. So by doing that you are going to get here is 2y is equal to this one we are going to have as 3x. So with that we have found whatever we needed. So meaning that we can take some of them to one side. So if we divide by y, we divide by y, we shall get 2 is equal to 3, uh, 3 over 3x over y. And if we need to remain with the letters alone, we divide both sides by 3, and we shall find 2 over 3 is equal to x over y. So meaning that the ratio of x to 3, that is the ratio of x to y actually, is equal to ratio of 2 to 3. And that is ratio of that sugar costing 45 shillings uh, is 2. And that of 50 shillings is 3. That is how we can find the ratio of a given uh, problem in mixtures. Now we have seen, in case you have mixtures, we have seen different ways which you can handle. So it is of different two ways. One of the way is where you will regard n or a given number of kg be mixed with 1 kg of another grain which is cost with the amount, then you divide by the total cost, or you take total different number of kg being mixed in order to find the total mixture. And then you do as I have directed you here, and you will find the answer. You can use these solutions here, which I have been doing here, that problem. So the experience which you have obtained here will help you to solve any kind of problem involving uh, mixtures.
With that, we have come to an end of compound proportion and mixtures. I hope it has been interesting. Thank you for watching it. See you in our next video.